Hey, this is David with Haggerty on a Redline Rebuild Updates. Uh, today I'm, well, I'm attempting to learn how to do some plating process. Uh, first off though, one thing, thanks for uh, all the comments relative to your projects. That's awesome that you guys are out there doing stuff as well. And well, quite frankly, you're going to be learning unless you were an expert, which uh, at least I'm not. So like I said today, I'm working on the Trail 70 and I have some specific bolts that I can't necessarily replace and at the same token they're not bad from a functional standpoint other than I've had to strip the nasty old plating off or they're rusted and so on and so forth and I hate to just throw them away if I can possibly reuse them. So I've been going through, as you can see, kind of a mess right now, but going through trying to learn a plating process to zinc plate them, uh, which is what the original plate would have been more or less and uh, trying to kind of do it at home so to speak. So it's fairly simple from chemical standpoint. Um, I'll really say the most exotic is muriatic acid, which you can get at any hardware store or home improvement or, or whatnot. And then this actually is a, a, a pickling bath for all intents and purposes because it's, it's uh, vinegar and salt. And then of course you have some anodes in it that are your plating, which in our case is zinc. So we have some zinc plates in there and we have a power source because you have to charge the part for the zinc to go from the zinc plate to the part you're trying to plate. So. Now I mentioned I'm using a voltage source that I quite frankly purchased off of Amazon. Now remember that this is a voltage source and so is that. The only difference here is this is controllable via a dial. These two are not. This is what you get. It is what it is but you can still plate with these as well. You just have to figure out that process, rather how much and how long you need to be in there relative to your part size. This isn't going to be a how-to, but this is how we're doing it. And actually we're gonna solicit some commenters out there. I'm sure somebody else has done this. And uh, if you see a hole in what we're doing, by all means, politely comment down here somewhere. And uh, we will pick up on that and uh, go from there. But here's what we've been doing. So. In general, the parts have been sandblasted. Uh, we've had just general sandblasting. We have used the vapor hone, and then we've also tumbled them. What we found that it works best to sandblast them and then tumble them. And if you're familiar, we use a, we have a tumbler that has some steel spheres in there. They tumble around in some Dawn dish soap, and uh, it basically polishes and really thoroughly cleans them. With that, I am going to go through and plate this axle bolt that I've had in here. It has been uh, degreased and it's just basically sitting in some water. Um, and now I'll just go through the process from after it's been cleaned through here. Now, if this bolt still had any type of uh, let's say plating on it or something along that lines, rust and whatnot, the muriatic acid would fizz and it'll pull it off. And I'm sure John will have a takeaway of some that we've done there. And of course, as you go through and you continue to do this, you're going to start putting maybe more chemical into your fresh water. So just think about the dilution function there. All right, so then from there into my bath. And I also have an air source in here just right from my air compressor. Um, you could also use like a fish tank bubbler, but just to kind of agitate the solution around. But let's start with that off for right now and we will hook up our power source, turn my power on. And now I'm just going to bring my amperage up until my really until my part kind of fizzes just a little bit. Should see some air bubbles come off of it, but it shouldn't look like uh, you drop an Alka-Seltzer tablet in here. So right about there seems to be a pretty good level. So it basically just kind of has a little bit of a foam to it. And again, we're not experts here. I am not going to claim to be an expert, and I'm sure there's 900 ways to improve what I'm doing right now. But this is kind of where we've gotten so far. Um, at this point, I'm going to let it sit for about 10, I'm going to go with 10 minutes. 
We'll let it plate for 10 minutes and then take it out, rinse it, dry it, and then put it in our, uh, our brightener, final brightener. All right, so that's uh, 10 minutes. And you can see we have kind of interesting path. So we have, it's a little darker down here and a little lighter on this end. So it's gonna be interesting to see how it goes through the, the brightener side of things and how that looks different. Um, I don't know that that's an indicator of thicker or thinner or whether we had too much amperage on this end of the part and it's, it's burnt for lack of a better word. So here's our regular water. All right, now I'm gonna blow off kind of the majority of the water. Actually, that's working pretty good. I'll just blow it all off. Now, let's see what our brightener does here. Look pretty good. I like taking it in and out so I can actually see what it's doing. I notice that's a little better than maybe leaving it in there because this tends to strip it as well. So, kind of a fine line of how long it's in and. And then we just dry it from here. And I'm going to heat it this time. Heat it on the final step. Played it actually quite well. Looks good. It's got a little bit of shine to it. It's not super shiny by any means. It's a, kind of a matte finish. Um, what we found though is we can use a little bit of a metal polish and get a little bit more shine to it if you want that. Again, I think if we had some nickel in the solution it would help it as well. And at this point, if you have anything on your fingers and it tends to tarnish it, you can uh, take some of this polish as well and that'll take that tarnish back off. All right, so here's one finished one. And uh, if you look over here, we have a good comparison. So this one is finished and we dipped it in the muriatic acid and pulled off some of the plating. So you can see it definitely did the job. Again, this is our very <laughs> crude, potentially, way of doing things. We've walked through, we've made a bunch of trial and errors, we've kept some physical notes, we've kept some mental notes, we've forgotten a lot of the other stuff, and, uh, and quite frankly, your results are going to vary probably just like ours have. And, uh, but at the end of the day, you can see that you can get good results in doing this at home with simple stuff. And uh, you know, as we progress, we're going to figure out and make it a whole lot better. And again, if you're already an expert, shoot us a comment and uh, we'll gladly look at that and apply it to our process. So until then, uh, I guess go out in the shop, get your bolts and whatever hardware you need, uh, zinc plated, sandblasted, degreased clean it, zinc plate it, polish it up, and then most importantly install it, and then go enjoy that project. So uh, for me, I'm out. See ya. Hmm. Your results may vary.